Good afternoon. We are at Certa End Italian Neuromarketing Days with Luis Martinez Rivas. In a society that seems to be overwhelmed with information, it is very hard for companies to stand out. How can companies overcome this problem and get customers' attention? And can neuroscience be a useful tool for facing this challenge? Yes, you are right. In a, in a current society, and I think that is going to be even worse in the near to in the future to come. Uh, we are living in an absolutely intoxicated society. Uh, in a normal day, we receive between uh, 2,000 and 4,000 impacts stimuli per day, at least. So this is an overdose of, call it data, call it information. Um, the brain and, 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 and as humans, we are protected. We, uh, the, we have, as psychologists say, we have a filter, we call it perception, a selective perception filter, that is filtering the things, the, image, the, the information that um, the filter considers that are useless to us. So the way to break the filter and your message may be able to pass the filter in and you become uh, conscious about this message um, is through emotion. So emotion is necessary for your message to become visible. This is number one. Emotion is necessary for making human decisions. Without emotions, humans are not able to decide anything. This is said by Portuguese Antonio Damasio. And um, emotions are very important for the memory. So these are the three, possibly more, but these are the very important things, um, uh, aims, purposes of emotions. Very important for brand recall also then. Yeah, of course. The third one is, uh, is brand recall. I, I much better, I would, I would prefer to say, ex brand experience in recall. Because experiences, when you experience something that is really moving, and these experiences, you get so positively touched, uh, this becomes unforgettable. And if it is unforgettable, the brand is being re going to be recalled, but not through the brand, but through the experience. So experiences are like vehicles for the memory. Um, is it possible to get consumers to buy products regardless of price? Come on, uh, we should... Uh, <laughs> uh, price is part of life. P price is part of our society. So now price is there, is one, one element more, and that's it. But this doesn't mean that we cannot sell products uh, that are not the cheapest. So, so, yeah, of course, of course. Price is only one element in the story. That's it. Uh, you previously m said that Customers' loyalty is good not only for business, but also for customers. Why exactly do you say that? Well, for business is logical because it's, um, uh, if they come back, come back, come back, we have cash flow. So it's a shower of money that comes back. This is for business. And for customers it's very important because when uh, humans, when people make decisions, um, they have to pay attention before making the decision. So getting information about the refrigerator or the TV set or the car I want to purchase or about uh, the new machine in my factory or this application for my information system. So when you are capturing information, uh, information about the supplier, about the vendor, etc., the cortex, which is the part of the brain that gets active, becomes tired. When, if you continue purchasing the next time, and the next time, and the next time, from the same vendor, there are many things that sh you shouldn't capture again. So your cortex gets less tired. So uh, that's why, um, from the neuroscience point of view, uh, customer loyalty is so nice. That's why when you go to the hairdresser, you say to your family, where are you going? I'm going to the hairdresser. You even don't say the name, you say the hairdresser because it's, you go there in a recurrent way. That's fantastic. If every month you should say, do an extra file about which is the best hairdresser I should go this month, you're going to get tired. How can a product go from being a simple commodity to become a part of a customer's life? This is what it should be. If you want to sell products with a very... Um, 
let's say, value or value for money or this kind of typical traditional marketing topics and value proposition, this is, you go into the cortex. You go into the part of the brain that is not responsible for the decision-making process. Um, if you want to be relevant, instead of me pushing the products towards you, the customer, it's much better to think, okay, Tell me about your life. I should understand your life, your life, your context, and understanding your life and context, then I should envision and create and shape, conceptualize a new solution that at the end is going to be better for your quality of life. So with us, with our solution, your life is going to be better. If I am able to, first, understand you, second, become engineers and solutions, and then, third, I became a script writer of a sequence of feelings. This is communication. So it's, I would like you to feel this. And you feel that my product, my solution, is going to be good for your life. You are going to sleep cal better, calmer with us, etc. At the end, you are going to purchase from us instead of me push the product to you. So it's much better to be part of their life. To improve their life is better than to push um, let's say, the product of the service in a very tricky way. Instead of forcing people to oh. buy it. Forcing is um, it's, it's not in the current life. Thank you so much for your time. Pleasure.